Think of two decades back and try to figure out what type of amazing technology was at the time. Probably listening to a radio station was legendary, I remember back then in my local village, villagers would go to the chief's home to listen to the evening news, and the radio would be shut down until the next day at 6 p.m. Owning a mobile phone was only for the lucky few, but now, more and more people are getting hooked to their phones as days go by, with an estimate of over 50 billion smartphones produced and used since 2000. Let's have a look at the evolution of technology on different things and what we probably think may be the coming future of it. Stay tuned to the end to receive an amazing technology fun fact that you might not be aware of. Number 5, Internet. Internet is a great thing that connects more than 5 billion people in the world. It brings good moments when you swipe those nice TikTok videos, increases our work efficiency, and makes work even easier through the use of programmed devices like this voice you're listening to right now, since I don't have a microphone to record myself. In the early 60s, government researchers started the internet to enable them to share information. Back then the computers were so large fitting in a whole room, so sharing of information from one computer to another, one had to travel all the way or use the kind of magnetic tapes and send them through the conventional system. The Soviet Union's launched the Sputnik satellite to help the U.S. Defense Department to consider ways information could still be disseminated even after a nuclear attack. This led to the invention of the ARPANET, Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, which is the network that evolved as what we now know as the Internet. ARPANET was a great success, but access to it was only limited to certain research and academic organizations who had contracts with the U.S. Defense Department. January 1, 1983 is considered the official birthday of the Internet. This is after TCPIP a new communications protocol was established and the Internet was made public to people. This enabled different kinds of networks to talk to each other. It was transmitted using coaxial copper line cables. At the time, if you had an Internet connection in your house, you wouldn't have a call and browse the Internet at the same time. Since the cables brought one signal at a time with a speed of up to 56 kilobits per second, it also had a challenge of interference from external electromagnetic power. Then the fiber optic cables came by, transmitting data using light signals, it had no interference and you can mix different signals together using wavelength division multiplexing technology. This also increased the data speed to up to 940 megabits per second. All this time, the cables are running from centers such as Google Data Center to network providers than to you. In 2015, something incredible happened, Elon Musk launched Starlink. A project that he would launch up to 42,000 satellites to the lower orbit about 500 kilometers above and provide internet to the entire world. Starlink is working in North America and some parts of Europe with over 1,400 active satellites, and the project is projected to be complete by 2023 and more advancements to come. NASA is studying how to build a Wi-Fi network on the moon in the hopes it could also solve Earth's digital divide. Internet is projected to be available everywhere from the Earth and soon blow out to space. Number 4. Tourism. Do you remember yourself at a young age being driven to a park in your country just in another city and you were so happy? What about those early Vikings who used to travel for months just to explore other areas? And then flights came through, now people would not travel for months on a boat which they were not even sure whether it would deliver them successfully. In the 21st century, you can go for a vacation in Iceland and within a few hours, you will be enjoying yourself somewhere in a nice restaurant in Reykjavik. Or maybe tell me in the comment section your favorite place to visit or where you wish to visit. Now after only two decades of the 21st century, they have taken it too far. Space Tourism. Imagine yourself in the space for a vacation for just one week. This time when you look through the window and you see no sea, no beach, but other stars surrounding you. I guess this would be incredible, tell me what you think in the comment section. Some of the richest guys in the world the likes of Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Richard Branson developing reusable spacecrafts that would ease space tourism. Due to this, the cost of space flight is lowering dramatically. Blue Origin, 
owned by Bezos, is developing the new Shepard spacecraft specifically for tourism flights into space. The spacecraft has six seats and has the largest windows ever seen in a spacecraft. This may be available to the super reach for now, but within one or two decades, the price will be well favorable. Think about the first few people who made a normal airplane flight in the 50s, paid a whopping $400 for a 23-minute flight. That's around $3,000 when adjusted for today's inflation. That cost seemed too high for normal people, but look at it now, hundreds of thousands taking place each minute in the world with as low as $25. That's evolution. Number 3. Data Storage. Storing data in computers has been one of the challenges encountered in the tech world. In 1725, Basil Buchan developed punch cards. This was the first to use machine language, they used holes that represented a sequence of instructions. In 1837, Charles Babbage proposed the analytical engine, a calculator with moving parts that used punch cards for instructions and responses. In 1960, magnetic storage replaced punch cards. And in 1966, the newly formed Intel Corporation began selling a semiconductor chip with 2 kilobits of memory. A semiconductor memory chip stored data in a small circuit referred to as a memory cell. They were made of miniaturized transistors and or miniaturized capacitors, which act as on or off switches. Nearly 2003, IBM was primarily responsible for driving the early magnetic disk storage. They invented both the floppy disk and the hard disk, which had a capacity of about 110 kilobytes. They became quite popular and used for most personal computers. Then the flash drives appeared in the market. They were quite portable and easily read with a built-in USB plug. It had storage sizes ranging from 128 megabytes to 64 gigabytes. Cloud storage was introduced in early 2006 which changed everything. With unlimited storage of up to the capacity of your plan, the options are endless. Today, experts estimate the entire digital universe holds up to 2.7 zettabytes of data. That's about 2 billion 700 million terabytes, and the rate of data storage is not looking to slow down. Cloud storage is assumingly the future of data storage, blockchain being introduced to bring more security to the data. Number 2. Money. Money has been the, so said, course of living for humanity. Money has had a lot of speculation, since I knew about it, it is said to bring happiness, on the other side it's said to be the course of most problems. Before money, people acquired and exchanged goods through a system of bartering, which involves the direct trade of goods and services. Until things changed approximately 600 BC in Europe, a region called Lindia. This was the first region of the world to use industrial facilities to manufacture coins that could be used as currency. And in around 700 BC, the Chinese moved from coins to paper money. Paper money has been the main currency of almost all nations until the 21st century which has given two forms of currency, mobile payments and virtual currency. Mobile payments are money rendered for a product or service through a portable electronic device such as a phone. Examples of this are PayPal, Apple Pay, Google Pay, this are the most famous among many others. And then there is the virtual currency. Introduced in 2009 by the pseudonymous Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin. Bitcoin quickly became the first virtual currency to be introduced. Virtual currencies have no physical coinage. They offer lower transaction fees and are operated by a decentralized authority, unlike government-issued currencies. And by the way, if you'd wish to hear more about other virtual currencies and how to invest in them, please comment down below and as always, your request is my command. Virtual currency is almost taking up the world in the shortest time ever. Within one decade, Bitcoin has dominated over half of the world and doesn't seem like slowing down, leading to other virtual currencies such as Ethereum, Dogecoin, and thousands of others. More and more crypto millionaires are evolving day in day out. In the future, virtual currency may be the currency to be used worldwide as a medium of exchange since it is fast to transact, no matter the distance, and have no regulation. Number 1. Education. The earliest formal education was developed in Egypt's the Middle Kingdom under the direction of Kiti. In Mesopotamia, 
The early logographic system of cuneiform script took many years to master. Thus only a limited number of individuals were hired as scribes to be trained in their reading and writing. Only royal offspring and sons of the rich and professionals such as scribes, physicians, and temple administrators were schooled. Most boys were taught their father's trade or were apprenticed to learn a trade, while girls stayed at home with their mothers to learn housekeeping and cooking and to look after the younger children. Later, when a syllabic script became more widespread, more of the Mesopotamian population became literate. Formal education came in the middle 500 to 1500 AD. The word school applied to a variety of educations in the Middle Ages, including town, church, and monastery schools. Students attending town schools were usually between the ages of 7 and 14. Education in West Africa was controlled by the French in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Adapted education was organized in 1903. The French language was also taught as an integral part of adapted education. In Africa, according to UNESCO's regional overview on sub-Saharan Africa, in 2000 only 58% of children were enrolled in primary schools. That was the lowest enrollment rate of any region. The rate in two decades has increased significantly and now about 98% of children attend primary schools and over 70% attend high school. The future of education is bright according to Salachin. Education might be easier and cheaper to acquire for everyone. Hoping that the neural link, Musk's company for brain chip may be launched for recreational purposes by 2025, we expect it to be quite popular by 2030. Theories will no longer be taught in schools since it's just easier to download them in the brain anytime you need them. It might not be easier to forget something, since when you know something important you just need to store it in the cloud for reference. Practical education will be learned, but 40% less than now. This is due to the development of artificial superintelligence and the use of robotics. Machines are said to be quite efficient and accurate making it cheaper to use robots than humans. This will reduce the skills covered by humans, and the only thing human beings will be left to learn is their hobbies. It's time for a fun fact. Before that ensure you click the subscribe button, like, and share our content. Did you know? Although there are more than 40,000 Chinese characters in written Chinese, many are rarely used. Studies have shown that full literacy in the Chinese language requires a knowledge of only between 3 and 4,000 characters. I think 4,000 is still a huge number. What do you think? Tell me in the comment section. Thanks, guys for watching, I'll see you in the next video.